Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for joining me today on filling the gap for Microsoft academic learning. I appreciate you allowing me to present remotely as family obligations have kept me from meeting you all in person. However, I do hope to meet you all at a future gathering in the future, uh, you know, very soon, or maybe our next uh, conference that we have. Uh, my name is Robert McMillan, although joining me is my co-presenter, Jake Slater. He can introduce himself when he gets uh, uh, to his portion of our discussion. I've been an adjunct professor at Portland, Oregon colleges since 2011. I also have a lot of different certifications from Microsoft, as well as many other vendors, including Cisco, IBM, CompTIA, you know, like the A+, uh, Project Plus, you know, all those kinds of things, and many others. I, I could actually wallpaper an entire room with all the certifications I have, but I can tell you that this that does not mean that I have real world experience. That's what our job as educators are supposed to do. So today employers are looking for several things. They're looking for college degrees, certifications, but they're also looking for experience. And if you're just going for your certification, then it, it doesn't really give you the experience that you need for that first time job that you need to get in IT. Certifications may get you that entry level position, but unlike the past, it's gonna be very difficult to climb the career ladder with only certifications. I joined Ascend Education, and we are the ones you know, presenting this to you, because I saw this gigantic hole where excellence in education once was that was provided by Wiley and Microsoft in the past. So Microsoft basically teamed up with the publisher called Wiley to create the courses that many of our colleges and universities across the country are using uh, in our degree plans. And I wanna help you to rebuild that excellence through new courseware and talk about what Microsoft has abandoned and how we can get it back as educators. Now, I'm not gonna just talk about Microsoft, I'm gonna talk about some other uh, technologies out there as well, but it'll mostly be Microsoft focus. So prior to becoming a professor, I, I do have sort of a, a holistic, you know, uh, view of the entire IT, you know, field. So for 20 years, I was an IT administrator, as well as the owner of a successful IT consulting practice, which I ran for 17 years, and then I sold in 2017. So stay tuned to the end of this presentation, where Jake is going to show you a hands-on demonstration of what the classroom of the future looks like today. Windows Active Directory servers and computers are in 95% of all Fortune 500 companies. So that means that Microsoft education is very important. Employers are saying graduating students for the very first time in, in the last couple of decades, graduating students, not just students, graduating students are desktop illiterate. They know Android, they know iPhones, they know tablets, they know, you know, all these different things. They don't know desktop computing and laptop computing using Windows operating systems. That seems really shocking to me that, you know, we are supposed to be educating our students and they're walking into the jobs that they're, they're getting after graduation and not just IT jobs. I mean, they're getting clerical jobs, they're getting admin jobs, they're getting jobs. Every job requires you to use a computer now and they don't know how to run them because they've been running these operating systems that businesses just aren't using. Linux computers only make up 1% of corporate uh, you know, computers. So you're not gonna typically walk into an office, sit down to a Linux operating system. And even Macintosh makes up less than 10% of what corporate users are using. Now you're gonna generally find Mac in a couple of different ways. Mac uh, computers are going to be uh, used by the executive level because they're not very computer savvy. They need a simple operating system that matches their iPhone. So, you know, they're gonna be using Macintosh. And the other group of people were, are gonna be your graphics department because they, you know, like the software better for graphics, for video editing, you know, that kind of thing than they like for Windows. So there's gonna be a certain amount of Macs in an office, but it's not going to be the majority. The majority are gonna be Windows clients and they're gonna be using Active Directory. So by having students in the primary and high school years using everything other than Windows, they're not actually preparing our students for the workforce. So we have to do this in college, right? So the importance of Microsoft education. 
education for Microsoft includes several things. Uh, it's going to include on-premises and hybrid Active Directory and servers. So that's going to mean that it's going to include the on-premises Active Directory, Azure Active Directory in order to connect to Microsoft 365 you know, types of uh, services, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, and also the very confusing Azure Active Directory domain services. This is a newer service that Microsoft has created inside Azure to hopefully replace on-premises Active Directory. So far, it hasn't really taken off yet, but they expect that it, it might in the future. So one or a combination of these services are being used in 95% of today's major companies. And then you have Azure Active Directory uh, and servers themselves. So the servers inside Azure Active Directory are going to be, of course, virtual machines, right? But there's more than just virtual machines in Azure. If you've ever logged into portal.azure.com, you're going to see over 100 different services that are being used by today's corporations. Now, of course, uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS, is also big. It, it's not Microsoft, right? But they run Microsoft products. They run Windows servers. They run uh, virtual machines on VMware and Hyper-V. So uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of Microsoft products there. And I think that we need to make sure that we uh, educate our students in AWS just as much as they need to be experienced in Azure itself. So AWS uses the Windows servers as well as Linux operating systems. Uh, it may not have the same Active Directory Azure piece, uh, but you can still install Active Directory on virtual machines. And then we have to talk about the emerging technologies as well. There are containers, containerization and serverless cloud computing. Uh, this is a new area of study. Now, of course, serverless cloud computing sounds kind of funny. It sounds like, oh, we're not using servers. Well, the, the, the uh, cloud computing actually runs on servers, but you never have to manage those servers. So if you do serverless cloud computing at Azure, AWS, or some of the other uh, you know, service cloud computing services out there, um, you just manage the applications. You don't manage the servers themselves, which is a, a pretty cool new technology. And containerization allows us to have applications that are either on premises servers or on cloud servers, and we can move them between the two, either automatically or manually using services like Docker or uh, using Kubernetes. Kubernetes was created by Google years ago and they thought, well, you know what? The whole world should be able to use this to manage containers. And so they went ahead and released it into open source. And now everybody can use Kubernetes. And it's a great place uh, that where we can educate our students because a lot of sysadmins and DevOps people are going to need to know how to, how to manage containers. So we also need some other things for Microsoft education. We need Windows cybersecurity. It's, this is amazing. I hardly see any colleges and universities offering Windows cybersecurity. Uh, you know, it's obvious that we should have these types of classes because of the amount of ransomware that is released out into uh, you know clients of all organizations. And so we need to make sure that we don't just teach cybersecurity from the networking perspective or from the Linux perspective, we need to teach it from Windows because that's what people are using. And so they need to understand how to protect themselves. Now, of course, there's third-party applications, but Microsoft has also built in a lot of really cool tools and utilities to protect from ransomware. For example, starting in Windows 10 and Windows Server 2019, they have an anti-crypto, anti-ransomware uh, feature that you can turn on that will keep any specified folders and the files inside them from being crypto. And that's a tremendous feature that we should be teaching our students so they know how to go in and protect those corporations. And that's just one example. There's lots of you know, different examples that are out there. And then Windows networking. A lot of people don't realize this, but Windows networking, uh, Windows servers can act like a router. They can act like a firewall. They can act like a VPN server. They can do what's called software-defined networking. Software-defined networking uh, has been around for a few years, but it's just now starting to get popular. It's basically using software 
to replace physical networking objects, such as a router or a switch, you know, those kinds of things. You can now have software-based switches and software-based routers and firewalls. Uh, that can end up saving you a lot of money and, and also reducing the complexity of your network because you don't have all these additional extra pieces that you have to manage. Application training. This is something that you know, you may or may not be doing as a college or university. We need to make sure that they understand. And, and by the way, where I'm getting this information is I'm not pulling it out of a hat. It says, um, uh, I live so close to Intel. I could throw a rock and, and hit their window. I mean, that's, that's how close I am to Intel. And I also live very close to Nike. Those are the two big employers in the Portland, Oregon area. And when talking to these employers, because we talk to these employers all the time to say, hey, what do you want to see when our you know, uh, students graduate from our college? And they tell us what they want to see. And uh, the things that I'm telling you are, are what these corporations, and if these corporations want this, then it's likely that corporations near you also want similar things. They want students who come out of our degree programs with experience with SQL, Microsoft SQL, MySQL, you know, all different, you know, NoSQL, all different kinds of SQL products that are out there. They want them to understand databases um, and they want them to understand the CRM and accounting packages, website applications, you know, all those types of uh, applications that use databases to manage the data that's in there in an organized fashion. And what we find is a lot of students don't come out of their degree programs with good database skills or application skills that run on top of these databases. And uh, again, a lot of these corporations, especially smaller to mid-sized corporations, they no longer have on-site exchange servers. They have uh, servers, or they have email and everything uh, that's related to email now at Microsoft 365 or at Google Workspace. The, you know, some, some companies use Google Workspace, but the majority are using uh, Microsoft 365. And in Microsoft 365, there's using, uh, you know, Office, right? You're not buying Office anymore. You're renting it for a few dollars a month. As a matter of fact, Microsoft has come out and said the next version of Office the next version of Windows Server and the next version of Windows Client cannot be purchased. They said that they're going to be rented and that's the only way you're going to get it. So uh, Microsoft 365 comes with Office and Teams and SharePoint and OneDrive. And so they've moved all of these uh, services off to the cloud and they're all integrated with each other. And that's how Azure Active Directory works. So if you have on-premises Active Directory and you synchronize to Azure Active Directory through a simple utility that they have, I've done it many times, um, then you, you have what's called single sign-on. So when you sign on to say Outlook to connect to your email, then you, uh, you sign into your computer using Active Directory. You don't have to add another username and password when you open up Outlook or when you open up Teams, uh, it's all single sign-on because those usernames and those passwords are now synchronized. You can open up SharePoint, you can open up OneDrive, all those different things. Now there's actually dozens of additional you know, products out there that are part of Microsoft 365, uh, but these are the most popular ones. Now we should talk about Teams for a second. Is Teams important because Zoom is out there? Zoom is only popular with education and a few smaller companies. Teams is what corporations tend to use uh, because Teams has the ability to integrate with Active Directory and Azure Active Directory. So you can lock down security wise, so you don't end up getting infected through Teams. Uh, you can lock down what users can and can't do through Teams. It also has links into over 60 applications that you can incorporate into Teams. In other words, you can incorporate Microsoft Outlook into your Teams video conferencing. You can't do that with Zoom. You can do, like I said, 60 plus different applications and more being added all the time. Zoom is just video conferencing, right? Uh, but, and also, you know, audio, confer uh, audio conferencing, and now they're adding Zoom phones and things like that. Teams has been doing that for a while as well. But uh, Teams is much a much more collaborative type of an application, and that's really what businesses are using. Are we teaching those to our students? That's a really good question. Well, up until a couple of years ago, we were teaching something called MOAC, Microsoft Official Academic Curriculum. 
And it includes several things. It was all based on the Microsoft MCSE tests uh, for um, uh, Windows Server 2016. So it included, with their uh, partnership with Wiley Publishing, books, ebooks, and physical books. It included slides for which you, the professors, could could then uh, you know give lectures on, and it included labs. Uh, it included labs that allowed us uh, to you know have hands-on. That's the hands-on thing that the certifications are missing, right? If you just have certifications uh, and no degree. It means that unless you've been working in the industry, you have no, no hands on. So our job is to give these students hands on capability. And it included these labs, which were great hands on ways of teaching our students. And then uh, last year, uh, early last year, Microsoft said, you know what, we're not going to support this anymore. Uh, so they told Wiley to cease and desist offering this uh, MOAC. Uh, you know, materials, the books, the slides, the labs, they're all gone. We're not going to do it anymore. Now, what do we do? <laughs> you know, do we, do we discontinue Windows Server courses? Well, that's not really an option because uh, we've already incorporated into the, into the, our college degree plans. How many of your college degree plans include Windows Server courses? Uh, I know that the colleges I've taught and teach, um, they all include them. They all include at least one or more Windows Server courses. Now, it took you probably a year or more, if, it, if it's similar to, to my schools, uh, to add in a course, right? You, you know, because it has to go through a whole bunch of different committees. Uh, and these committees have to vote and they all have to decide. And then there's changes made and, and then more changes made until finally you get a polished course, you add into your degree plan and then it's part of it. So discontinuing Windows servers, Server courses is not an option. Uh, you can develop new courses in-house if you'd like, uh, but developing co new courses in-house, you all know if you've developed any courses in-house, it takes a long time to do, and you are, and since you know, Wiley can no longer provide these courses to you, uh, it takes a long time to develop new courses yourself. And once again, you got to go through all those different processes of approval until uh, it's it's finally good to go. So that's not uh, a great option for a lot of colleges and universities. Now, here's an option: you could license courses that are already created, and this makes the most sense when Microsoft pulled the rug out from under us, right? Uh, so these courses already uh, are based on what Wiley and Microsoft did with, with MOAC, with the Microsoft Official Academic Courses. And so uh, they uh, already pretty much match what it is that you've been doing all these years with MOAC and those educational courses. And at Ascent Education, which I joined because of this very issue of this, this huge hole that Microsoft has left us. Uh, I joined Ascend Education because like, what am I going to teach, right? So I got together with Ascend Education and we put our heads together and we came up with these courses to fill that gap. So you as educators can have courses to go ahead and continue using your degree plan. And the nice thing about it is when new courses or updates need to happen to our existing courses, the courses are updated for you. You don't have to spend your valuable time doing these updates. We take care of them for you. So for instance, we're running Windows Server 2019 as of now because we're upgrading from the 2016 courses. We thought about going up to Windows 2022 right away, but you know, a lot of people, a lot of organizations, they haven't upgraded yet. So we started at Windows 2019. And we plan, we're actually working on the updates to Windows 2022 uh, for later this year, for early next year. So you don't have to say, oh, okay, I need to develop this new course based on this new material. We'll take care of all that for you. So that way you can slide into Windows 2022 and whatever comes after it uh, as you need to. Doing the same thing with Windows 10. Windows 10 has now been replaced by Windows 11, but most people have not upgraded, right? They don't have the hardware. You have to have specific hardware to make it work. And most people are still using hardware that doesn't have the requirements to be able to use Windows 11. And so, uh, you know, I'm running on a Windows 10 computer now because this, even though this computer is not that old, it didn't have everything that was needed for uh, Windows 11. So I'm stuck on Windows 10. However, we realized that's the way things are going. So we are in the middle of updating our Windows 10 course 
to Windows 11 should be ready uh, by the end of this year, beginning of next year. So that way we're ready to start uh, providing that for people to be able to teach. So you don't have to go through all that you know, extra work to have that happen. And the uh, materials that you're seeing, uh, they're, they've been created by Microsoft certified authors and instructors. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. I have that certification. Uh, and it's a, it's a rigorous type of a certification. It requires to have other types of certifications and to be teaching classes for what you're certified to do. And then Microsoft goes through this long, you know, series of questions and answers until they've uh, they even interviewed my boss, you know, to make sure that, you know, I was teaching these courses. And then they finally gave their stamp of approval and said, you are a Microsoft certified trainer. So these courses are created and tested by Microsoft certified trainers, certified authors and instructors. So that way, you know, you're getting, uh, you know, materials that you can trust. So you know, when you get your course, you can uh, go ahead and provide those labs, those slides, uh, you know, the, the, the books, you know, all those different things, just like you have been doing. So eBooks, you know, eBooks are not for everyone. If you have developed a course yourself and you're used to handing out, uh, you know, paperback books, well, guess what? Paperback books are now an option that's available. So if you want a physical book instead of an ebook for your students, just because you don't want the full meal deal. You know, the, when I say the full meal deal, that means we provide you with everything. This, the book, the slides, the labs, everything. You may only need the book because there are no good books for 2019 and for 2022, right? The, the last good books that were written for these courses were stopped in 2016. And so, you know, we need better books. We, we created better books. So if you've already got a course going and you want to slide a good book into, then we've got that available. And we're also adding in books for uh, Red Shelf as well. So we've got Kindle as an option. They can buy the books in paperback from Amazon, uh, you know, and the books are not that expensive. The paperback books for our Windows Server courses are $49.95, so 50 bucks, right? The Kindle option, $30. So these are not $150 books that are gonna cause your students, you know, to not be able to take the class. Um, Third-party university publishers, such as Red Shelf and Vital Source, are being finalized right now. So I've seen the contract, it's getting signed, we're getting our books into Red Shelf and Vital Source if you want to go that direction. Again, that's if you don't want to buy the full meal plan where you know we provide everything to you. Maybe because you already have written all your slides and you have already written all your uh, your labs and you don't need the whole thing, but you still need a good book. Then that flexibility is available, and that's one of the the good things about working with Ascend Education. Uh, you know, when I joined up, I said, "Here's what we need to change, and here's why." And they said, "That makes sense to us. You're the expert. Make it happen." And so that's what we can do for you. So if you say, we need to change this, we need to change that, uh, you know, then we, we look at what it is that you're suggesting. We create custom courses for you, uh, or we can, you know, make changes to existing courses if the changes you recommend make sense to us to do for other uh, colleges as well. So lots of different options. We're very flexible uh, to make things happen for you. So current Ascend Microsoft available courses, these are courses that are available as of today. And we have been selling these types of courses now for the past year. Not only that, I'm teaching them. I'm teaching them uh, right now at Clark University in uh, Vancouver, Washington. I'm teaching the, the following three courses, Windows Server Administration, Advanced Network, and Active Directory. So if I didn't believe in these courses, I wouldn't be teaching them. <laughs> so that's that's how much you know I believe in them. So Windows Server Administration, that's a great course um, that basically introduces you into uh, Windows Server Administration, sort of treats you like a junior admin and teaches you about how to create an Active Directory forest and domain, how to manage users, how to manage objects, uh, you know, all different types of, you know, Windows Server administration tasks, not, not just Active Directory related, but, um, you know, all the different ways of managing a Windows Server and a Windows network. 
Then you have advanced networking. That takes networking several steps further. It shows you how to use software-defined networking, how to turn your server into a router or a firewall. It talks about uh, advanced uh, topics uh, in the networking field uh, that if you've ever you know, gone into a network card's properties and looked at all the different features and they're like, what are all those features mean? We go over that in this course. So that way, uh, students who then become sysadmins will be able to uh, you know, decide for themselves what features they would like to use on their Windows server. And then of course, Active Directory. That takes Active Directory many steps further. So instead of just introducing you to Active Directory and doing basic management skills, it goes into advanced Active Directory. So advanced uh, DNS, advanced DHCP for uh, handing out IP addresses, uh, also creating failover, clustering, uh, you know, all, all these different group policy objects, uh, how to manage networking with group policy, how to manage security with group policy, uh, and, and many more. Uh, we also do touch a bit on Azure uh, as well for those who want to synchronize with uh, their on-premises Active Directory with Azure Active Directory. Uh, so very advanced uh, types of things that uh, you can teach beyond just basic administration. Those classes are ready to go today. We also have, for those uh, who want to teach to a certification, when we have a lot of uh, you know, colleges and universities to say, you know what, our students are saying they not only want a degree, but they, they also want to get credit for learning and taking a certification course. So a Azure AZ-104 is out there, Azure AZ-900, that's out there, it's being taught right now. Uh, so if you are interested in that kind of thing, great. And there's a lot more uh, Microsoft on-premises and Azure uh, certifications coming uh, to Ascend Education. So we're adding over a dozen new courses, such as uh, the MOS certificate, that's the Office Specialist Certificate uh, training for Word and Excel. Those are in uh, you know, uh, the development stage right now, as well as other technical courses. And some are Microsoft and some are other you know, types of technical courses and we're adding certifications. So Microsoft got rid of the MCSE certifications, right? Well, students still want to get certified or some, type, some sort of certificate when they pass a Microsoft class. And so we are bringing in certificates, certifications. They're not Microsoft certifications, but they're certifications your college or university offers that are certified for them uh, having uh, you know, the skills that they earned in your college. So it's going to be a college certificate based on whatever Microsoft test or Microsoft uh, uh, class that they took. So very cool stuff. I, I think that it's really, uh, the students love that kind of thing. They love seeing the certificate certifications uh, that they can put on their resume and they can put your college name you know, next to it, which is awesome. So I'd like to talk about things from a professor's perspective, right? Uh, because I am a college professor and uh, you, you know, if you kind of take a look back at what's happened these last couple of years, we as professors, we all created college and university courses around the Microsoft official academic courseware. And students, they became invested in it, right? Because you added them into the, the degree and they became invested, they invested their own money into learning these types of things. And we built our degrees around MOAC. What happened? Microsoft discontinued it, right? You can't even legally use their materials <clears throat> that, they, that they and Wiley uh, you know, created. So can we trust Microsoft going forward for higher education curriculum? What if tomorrow they said, oh, we came out with this new thing. Go ahead and add it into your degree. Can we trust them? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what if they pull the rug out again? You know, the you know a couple of years from now, after we've you know integrated them into our degree plan. Now, Microsoft has come out with some new training that you may or may not be aware of. Um, it's called Microsoft Learn. So you can even type this into Google search if you want, and you'll see Microsoft Learn. You can you can get a free account to log in if you have a Microsoft certification, then you already have access to this. So it uses Microsoft's own, um, their own uh, education instructors, right? Their own instructors, they're not using college professors or anything like that. And it's not you know, designed for higher education. They did not create new degree plans for education. They only created these things 
uh, for themselves, right? So it's trained to only pass certification tests. It's not really considered real world training. So I wouldn't consider Microsoft Learn a great place to learn because they're just training you how to do their certifications. Here's an example of a question that they, they ask their students. Uh, so do, I ask you, is this considered preparing a student for the workplace? Here's the question, match the services on the left. This is from Microsoft's on site. Uh, match up services on the left to the correct descriptions on the right. This is a certification prep test question. The pricing calculator, the TCO calculator, the cost management. What they don't teach you is how to do cost management, right? They teach you what the definition is, but not how to do cost management. Now, one of the things I did for many years as a consultant was I took in, uh, you know, I, I would go to a client and they would say, we need a server replacement. And I would say, what are you looking for? And they would say, I don't know. So I would bring into them uh, an Excel spreadsheet with a good, better, and best solution. And I would say the good solution will get you through your problem. It'll cost the least, but it will be the worst for you long term. The better solution, you know, and then you have the best solution. So the best solution obviously costs the most, but in the long run costs the least. And I would give them a total cost of ownership and I would, you know, share with them uh, over the course of the next five years, this is what it's going to cost you. So you can decide between good, better, and best. That's the kind of stuff we need to teach our students so they know how to present you know, these types of offers to clients or to their bosses when they need to replace equipment or need to possibly move to the cloud. But that's not what Microsoft is teaching you. They're teaching you how to pass a test. And that does not help our students at all. They need real world training. Real world training requires hands on. It requires labs in real world situations. So, uh, you know, they can uh, be given labs and say, hey, configure this server as a DHCP server and configure it in failover in case the first DHCP server fails, the second one can continue handing out IP addresses to clients. That's the kind of real world thing that a student needs to know, not just how to pass a certification. And of course, they also need quizzes and final exams. They need to be tested on the real world situations on which you just had them do in their labs. They need to have videos with walkthrough demos. And this is one of the things that does set us apart from other uh, places is, uh, you know, we go in and create videos that in case you get stuck in your lab, or maybe when you're reading the ebook or the physical book, you're not quite grasping something. These walkthrough video demos give you context to what it is you're reading. Context is really important. Otherwise, you're memorizing something you may never use. Uh, and, you, and if you do end up using it a few years from now, you won't remember what it is that you did. But a video walkthrough along with a lab, that's going to give your memory, the students' memories, the ability to go in even a few years from now and say, oh, yeah, I learned about how to do that in college. Here's how we do it. Professional slides and diagrams. The slides and diagrams aren't necessarily just for the students. They're also for the professors. You need to be able to lecture, right? You're going to have on-campus classes. You're going to have synchronized classes where you have to give a lecture online. And those are, that's what the slides are for. They're for the professors mostly to uh, have you know, diagrams and various different points that they can talk about to teach their students and answer those students' questions. And you get support from real agents and professors. So if something comes up where you're having a problem, something stops working right, uh, you know, maybe you, you're reading something, you're going, eh, you know, that could be explained better. Then you can talk to a real person just to, you know, say what it is that's confusing about something, and then we can fix it for you. You're not going to get stuck in an endless loop where you never actually talk to a person. And so um, now here's the way, here's what happens in real life. So a professor will say, hey, you know, the way that this particular question was asked in a quiz or, some, or the way this was written in this book, it's a little bit confusing to the students. I want to make sure this is accurate and clear. The, they will open a ticket or call up Ascend Education and, and say what it is that is their concern. The, if the agent knows what the problem is simply by reading and hearing what the person is saying, they can fix it on the spot. But if it's beyond their technical ability, because they may not be professors themselves, they get a hold of somebody like me. 
and they say, hey, you know, this thing and this about Windows servers and DNS or whatever it is, uh, you know, can you just go over this a second and just make sure that this is as clear as it can be? I'll go over it and I'll say, oh, you know what? I could make that even more clear by saying it this way. I'll type up the changes. I'll send it to the agent. The agent sends it to the professor who made the request. We come to an agreement, an agreement on whether or not it sounds right. And then the case is then closed. That's the kind of stuff you don't get with large corporations. <laughs> so most of all, it includes you, the professors and instructors to educate the, the students. We don't cut you out like Microsoft did. Microsoft cut out all colleges and universities by removing MOAC and replacing it with Microsoft Learn, whereas we put you back in. So what's in today's classroom? Well, today's classroom is mostly online. If you look at all technical classes in traditional colleges and universities today, they're now 80% online. Now, I'm not talking about just online schools. I'm talking about traditional on-campus classes. Ever since the pandemic, they're saying, you know what? Our students don't really all want to come back. Some of them do, but not all of them. And so 80% of those classes are either asynchronous where you pre-record your lectures or synchronous where you do live recordings every week or every couple of days uh, and, and you don't actually end up going into the classroom. That adds some additional challenges. We still need some on-campus classes, of course, uh, because some students are just going to require the instant feedback you know, that a classroom does provide. And we need education that's going to satisfy all the students' needs, both synchronous, asynchronous, on campus, all those different things, all those things are going to need uh, to be met. And so the Ascend Education uh, curriculum with the slides and the quizzes and the labs, they are all there for you and can assist. Now, the labs are really cool. The labs are going to be um, based on uh, you know, basically, basically go into a web browser. So let's say you use Chrome or you use Edge, you know, whatever it is that you want. And you um, uh, typically before in the past, at least I have, I've used VirtualBox and VMware, depending on which school I was teaching and which class I was teaching. Those are the two that I used. And I know that a lot of colleges and universities, they're using one or the other, installing it on the, the, the students' computers or in lab computers. And I spent half of my class just troubleshooting VMware and VirtualBox on these kids' computers. Well, that, you know, that wasn't teaching them anything. That was, you know, especially nothing that was going to come up in corporations. They're not using VMware Workstation. They're using ESXi. They're not using VirtualBox. It's a free product that has tons of bugs in it, right? So it's really no longer viable to use uh, students' to own computers. And sometimes these students have other operating systems besides Windows clients, right? They're using Macintosh a lot of times. Some of them are using, uh, you know, Linux, very few, but, um, you know, they need to be able to do these labs no matter what operating system they have. Now, some students who are not financially well off, they're using Chromebooks because they're so inexpensive. You can't install VirtualBox on Chromebooks, right? So you can now use, uh, you know, such as the Chrome web browser on any operating system, right? It doesn't matter what operating system you're using. You can use these virtual labs that we're offering at Ascend Education. So we can make changes on the fly when needed and videos and books for when students get stuck. Just to uh, finish this up the last few minutes, this is what Intel and Nike, and I'm sure most organizations and corporations around the country and around the world, this is what a modern network looks like in their organizations. And this is what we need to do to teach them. To start with, you've got your core networking, right? So this core networking can be taught by teaching Cisco. It can be taught by teaching, you know, other types of, you know, networking and architectural design, things like that. And you've got firewalls. How many colleges and universities are teaching firewalls? Well, they may have it as a module in their, uh, you know, their networking, their routing and switching class, but they may not be focusing on it. And we need to start focusing on firewalls because firewalls exist both in the cloud and they exist on premises. And then of course, 
the connections to the cloud, the, the internet themselves. Do we open ports? Do we close ports? You know, uh, what port? What are ports? <laughs> you know, uh, you know, what what are the different options for security when it comes to uh, cybersecurity out to the internet? Then you've got your Windows devices. You've got Active Directory domain controllers, DHCP servers, DNS servers for domain name systems, so you can resolve names to IP addresses. And you got file and print servers, and those are often connected to iSCSI. And these are what, these are some of the things that we teach in our classes, right? We teach you how to connect uh, a server to a separate box of hard drives we refer to as iSCSI. Databases and applications. I talked about databases and applications earlier on Windows servers as well as Linux servers. And then email. Larger corporations still have email on site. Uh, the small to medium sized ones have gone off to Microsoft 365. VPN, turning our servers into a VPN server or turning the firewall into a VPN server. These are things that our students need to know. Then we've got Oh, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is probably going to replace most, most wired connections to clients inside offices. And that's because it's expensive, right? Going, uh, re-cabling from Cat5 to Cat5e to Cat6. Well, Cat5e is the most popular because the, cat, the uh, cables are very flexible. And so we're moving away from that because the highest speed you can get is 800 megabits per second. Wi-Fi is already way past that. So we're probably not going to be redoing all the wiring in our offices will probably be moving completely to Wi-Fi for both desktops and laptops because they can go much faster and we don't have to rewire them. And then we've got network printers. We don't want our students when they graduate to walk into an office and the first time they see a network printer is on their first day on the job. We need to teach network printing, the networking portion of printing, the scanning, scanning to email, scanning to files, the security that's involved, in it, that needs to be taught. Voice over IP. How many uh, people are deploying copper phone lines anymore? None of them. They're all using IT to do voice over IP for their phones. SD-WAN is the newest technology for internet connectivity because it includes built-in VPNs to remote offices. So no, you no longer have to manage that yourself. You can actually let the ISP do that. Or it's possible that you may not be using that type of technology and you still need to set up your own VPNs. VPNs need to be taught. And cloud servers, of course. We need to teach cybersecurity and cloud servers as part of our curriculum. Internet of Things. Here's something you may not have thought of. Uh, refrigerators are now on the internet. You go to Home Depot to buy a refrigerator, you can buy one now that is on the internet that will take pictures of the inside of your refrigerator while you're at the grocery store to tell you what you need. Well, there's a ton of devices like that music, clocks, all different kinds of things that are all going to be part of IT because they are internet capable. And then you've got, of course, don't want to forget, PCs, cell phones, tablets. Those are, of course, the majority, make up the majority of client calls in your network. So that is your that is your modern network design. This is the these are the things that we have to train our students to understand when they graduate our colleges and universities. And if they don't know all these things, they are not ready for the workforce. So now I'd like to turn this over to Jake Slater. And he's going to tell us all about, he's gonna show you uh, all about our different offerings and how they look and how they work. Yeah, thank you, Robert. And uh, in order to, uh, for recording purposes, I'm gonna, Steal the screen away here. Yep, yep, I stopped presenting. Okay. Um, uh, okay, let me share this. Um, okay, so this is uh, the inside of an Ascend Education course. Robert has done a very good job of uh, letting us know um, what needs are, are there now that uh, uh, Microsoft has done away with their official curriculum. And um, so just to give you an idea of what an Ascend Education course looks like to kind of fill some of these needs, uh, this is the specifically the Azure uh, Fundamentals course, AZ900. Um, within this course, uh, this uh, is the table of contents. Uh, these courses integrate with LMSs like Canvas, Blackboard, desire to learn d 2 l and um, so if if uh, you at your school are integrating with 
um, one of those popular LMSs, um, it will actually look much like, well, it will look exactly like what the students' other courses look like. But uh, within our um, actual LMS, it looks like this. We have um, text sections that also contain videos. Um, we have labs that are here in green. You can see that these things are color coded. Um, assessment questions here in pink. Um, and students uh, are able to go through this kind of on their, um, as, as instructed by their, their instructor for the course and on their own, they're able to, to go through these sections uh, one at a time. So uh, to give you an idea of kind of what the text sections look like, they are um, all built in here uh, like an ebook, but including videos such as the one that you can um, placements on our own. The next option would be the hybrid cloud. And in the hybrid cloud, you have some assets on premises and you have some assets in the cloud. Probably recognize that voice there of Robert. Um, these videos are more uh, go through demonstrations and, and discuss the important topics that um, that need to be understood uh, for anybody for this particular course taking uh, Azure Fundamentals. So the if if we go back to um, this course layout, we also, as Robert touched on, use virtual labs. We have partners. Um, our partner for this particular course is ACI um, or Practice Labs. There's some that are at this conference. Um, these virtual labs boot up actual virtual machines on servers. Um, they, because of that, they could take a couple of minutes to uh, load on there. But um, over here, it, it goes through steps that they take uh, for the virtual lab. Um, they have step-by-step -step instructions uh, once that, that lab boots up. Over here, when it does boot up, there's a, a sandbox um, area where they can actually go in. They can even make mistakes, whatnot. That's that's different than what you would find in in like a simulated lab. It's more of like a gamified version. Um, but they can really do whatever they they want or need um, within this course. But like I said, they they are taken through step by step instructions um, on how to do various things. Um, so I can scroll through there just to kind of get an idea. Uh, at the end of this, there's an assessment um, that is graded. They can go through, submit those, and then when they hit complete, it uh, submits their grade. And with LMS integration on the Ascend Education platform uh, within the course, um, it makes that gradebook integration very easy. Uh, grades are are sent straight to the instructor's gradebook yeah so, I, I love that somebody yeah. takes a test and it goes right to the gradebook i don't i do not have to grade that myself love it yeah um there are also uh, just to give you an idea there's uh the quiz questions in each of these sections um students can go through complete the quiz and then also submit that for um, a grade as well um, i will not take that since i don't know the answers to those questions um back to the course uh there are instructor slides you can see the the powerpoints so we try at ascend education we and and as robert has discussed we try to make the life of instructors as easy as possible so we've included a number of tools like the powerpoint presentations um the quizzes the the gradebook integration um the, the videos, everything we, we, we want to make your lives easier, um, which is why we have, have put it together like this. And as Robert discussed, um, this is where we see kind of this type of, of uh, online education going. We, we think that it will include as much um, material as possible uh, and, and make it possible for students to kind of do things on their own, of course, under the direct. Again, Robert, I know, has, has gone through these courses on his with his classes and uh, could probably speak to that more than I could, but uh, it's very helpful. Um, 
Uh, okay, yeah, and there's there's a midterm final exam as well, um, and then uh, yeah, students uh, like with this AZ nine hundred course, for instance, like Robert talked about. Uh, this one in particular leads to a certification, um, and students can then uh, they will be prepared to take that certification based off of, of what they have learned in this course. Um, that's that's the 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 gist of this. Um, this is kind of what the students view. The instructors will have their own. Uh, you know, we provide free instructor access. They have their own view where they again can see the gradebook. And, and how it all fits in, um, how all that reporting works, um, and they can lead their students on through there. Um, Robert, based off of your experiences in your classes, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I was going to mention that for the certification uh, courses that you see here, uh, we have a, we're, going, we're adding in within the next month or two, uh, adding in certain prep for the students to go take the test. Because as anybody who's who's passed a test known or taken a college course or, or taught a college course uh, for one of these types of things, getting the knowledge uh, that this certification test has doesn't mean that you're prepared to take the test because they they try to ask you questions in tricky ways. They they give you certain scenarios and options uh, that uh, you need to understand as, as the student or as the the potential test taker. And so uh, we're providing the, that CERT prep, which is a separate section for those um, certification tests here shortly. 